everybody, it is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how, how to crochet this top that you've seen me wearing there in the picture. But first, I'm going to give you some measurements of the top itself. So you know, you got a general idea to go by. So I'm going to be measuring from the neckline down all the way past the ribbing to tell you the length. It's 22 inches. Now, if I was to measure from um, where it lays on top of your shoulder, um, right here, all the way down to past the ribbing, it is about 23 and a half inches. Now, that's the length. Now, I'm five foot three. So, you've seen where it lands on me. You can make it longer if you want. Um, I, Whenever it's time to make it longer, I'll tell you in the video uh, at what part you can make it longer if you decide. Um, width wise, let's give you a quick measurement on that, is about 17, yeah, about 18 inches across. So, um, I don't usually wear clothes like this, but if I did, this would probably be a size medium, the one that I'm making in the video. Now, you can make it uh, bigger. And I'll tell you how in just a second. Sleeves are three quarters. You can make them short sleeves or long sleeves. I'll tell you how to do that in a video also. And they run about 10 inches. And the neckline, as you can see, is an off the shoulder neckline. Also, you can make that bigger too, but the neckline is 13 inches. Okay, so I gave you all the info on how big it is. The one that I made in the video. Now I want you, if you need a different size than me, than the medium, um, I will put in the description box on how to to um, change sizes. Now some sizes, like small, large, uh, extra large, or whatever, um, I might tell you to just use a different hook but follow the same pattern. Bigger sizes, like maybe 2X, 3X, or whatever, um, I will give you a different chain amount to start with. But otherwise, it's it's really easy. It's an easy pattern to do. So it's made with two panels, um, the same. And we put the ribbing on the, the each panel. And then we sew them up um, at the sides and up here at the shoulders. And then we make our sleeves, which I said you can make to your desired length, whether you want them short or long. It's completely up to you. But yeah, that's it. You guys want to go ahead and get started on it? I'll show you what yarn I used. Oh, just for the record, this yarn was color controlled, which means I, I uh, used a yarn that was striping and I controlled where the stripes were put. That's why my sleeves are exactly the same. Um, if I didn't color control, they would turn out differently. That's why both my panels are exactly the same on both sides. I color controlled that. Now, I do have a video on how to color control. I'll put a link to that below in the description box also. Um, also, I'll put it in the comment section along with the sizing section in case, along with the sizing um, information. Um, check the description box and if you can't find it there, check the comment section. I'll, it'll be the first thing first comment from me it'll be pinned at the top of the comments so this for this project I use a lion brand scarf yarn now it is an acrylic wool blend and it is a bulky number five I do recommend the use of a bulky number five for this pattern unless you are going to adjust your chain amount and you know how to size uh, clothing up yourself um, I recommend using the uh, it don't have to be this one but any bulky five uh, would work but I will give you the stitch multiple if you you're, if you're good at resizing for different yarns um, there's 312 ball, uh, yards per ball and I went through three so um, not quite all of three so I mean for my size 900 yards probably you know bigger sizes are going to take a bit more um, so but that's what I use. The color I have is called Iron Umber. Remember, you don't have to use this yarn. Any bulky five will work. And I used a size J, 
which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Now remember, um, I will recommend a different size hook for a couple different sizes, as opposed to some sizes I'll recommend a different chain amount. Look for all that information below before you start in the comment section um, and, and in the description box. But on video, I'm making the size medium to fit me. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, so the two panels are done in a multiple of eight plus four, which means that your beginning chain, the number that you come up with, it needs to be evenly divisible by, by eight, and then you add four more chains to it. So for my size, I started with a chain of 68. So what I'm gonna do is I got my chain of 68 down. I am going to single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. So we don't count the one that's on our hook. So the second one over, I'm going to single crochet. And now I'm gonna work across and I'm gonna put one single crochet in every stitch for our first row. Okay, I have made it to the end of row one, and my size, I'm going to have a total of 67 stitches now. So I'm going to start row two by chaining one and turning my work. Now I'm going to put a double crochet right here into the very first stitch. And then I'm going to put a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So counting that first double crochet, we have three double crochets in a row. Now I'm going to start the repeat pattern for row two. So I'm going to skip two stitches. Skip, skip, and in the next one I'm going to work a double crochet. And then I'm going to be working around the post of the same double crochet to create that little uh, cluster kind of thing that you see. So we're going to chain three and now we're going to be working around the post of this double crochet and we're going to work three doubles around that post. So there's one, two, and there's three. So that's how that is made. It's actually really pretty easy. So we're going to skip two stitches again one two and then the next one we're going to put a double crochet and then a double crochet into the next two so that'll be a total of three double crochets in a row just like that so that's what it kind of looks like this kind of sticks up that's fine I'm supposed to do that now we're going to repeat it again so we're going to skip two stitches skip skip Next stitch, we will put one double crochet, and then we're going to work our front post cluster stitch. So we're going to chain three now, one, two, three, and then around the post of this double crochet that we just did, we're going to work three double crochets. There's one, two, and there's three. Now we're going to skip two stitches again, skip, skip, and we're going to put one double crochet in each of the next three stitches, just like we did before. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So that's the repeat for row two now. Again, we're going to skip two stitches. So skip, skip. In the next one, we're going to put one double crochet. And then we will chain three. And then the same double crochet here that we just worked, we're going to work three double crochets around the post of it. So there's one, two, and three. Then we're going to skip two stitches again, so skip, skip, and then we're going to put one double crochet into the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Now we're going to keep repeating this until we get to the end of the row.
Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two and I just did a cluster here and I have five stitches that remain. So I want to skip two and I want to put a double crochet in the remaining three stitches. And that'll end row two. And if you're following my size, we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these little uh, post clusters and then nine sets of three double crochet so now we're going to start row three row three and four are the repeat rows so we're going to go ahead and start row three which we're going to chain one and turn our work and we're going to start off by putting a double crochet into the first three stitches here so double crochet into that first stitch. Double crochet into the next and a double crochet into the next. Now we're going to start the repeat for row three. We are going to chain two and we are going to single crochet into the see this cluster here uh, the chain three we did on it. We're going to single crochet into the top of that chain three of this cluster. Just like that. And then we're going to chain two. And we will put one double crochet in each of these three double crochets from the previous row. One. Two. And three. And that is what we're going to repeat for row three. So we'll start off again by chaining two, single crochet into this chain three, the top chain of the chain three of this little side, this cluster, post cluster. So single crochet into the top of that chain three. Then we chain two and one double crochet into these next three double crochets from the previous row. Pretty easy. Show you one more time. We're going to chain two, single crochet into the top of the chain three of this cluster here. Chain two, and one double crochet in each of these three double crochets from the previous row. So, this is a pattern I'm going to repeat for row three all the way until I get to the end of the row and that's what it kind of starts to look like all right i'm coming to the end of row three and i single crochet there into the top of that chain three of this cluster so i'm going to chain two and end by putting one double crochet in the remaining three double crochets from the previous row and that will end row three and you should so this time you'll have eight little single crochets here on top of your clusters and still have nine sets of three double crochets if you're making the size that I am. Okay, now we're going to start row four, which is kind of very similar to row two. So we're going to chain one and turn our work, and we're going to put a double crochet here into the first three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Now we are going to skip this chain two and we're going to be working in the single crochet here we're going to put a double crochet into that single crochet and then we'll work our cluster here so we'll chain three and go back around the post the double crochet that we just made around the post of it and work three double crochets so there's one two and three and then we will skip this chain two here and we'll work three double crochets in these double crochet three double crochets from the previous row just like that so that's kind of the repeat so there are no um chain spaces between the clusters on this row so we skip this chain space and into the single crochet uh, on top of this cluster right here, we double crochet 
and then we work our little cluster so we chain three and then around the post of that double crochet we work three double crochets there's one two three skip this chain space here and work a double crochet into the next three double crochets from the previous row and that's going to be our repeat for row four and again your little these will be sticking up again that's fine so i'll show you one more time we skip this chain space and into the single crochet here on top of this cluster we double crochet and then we chain three and go back around that double crochet and work three double crochets around that post there's one two and three and then we skip this chain space here and we work a double crochet in each of these three double crochets from the previous row and we want to repeat that pattern until we get to the end of row four All right, I'm coming to the end of row four. I just did my last cluster, so I'm gonna skip this chain space here and put one double crochet in the remaining three double crochets from the previous row. And you should have eight of those clusters and nine sets, if you're following my size, nine sets of three uh, double crochet. So that's what I'm gonna do from here on out, is I am going to continue working rows three and four the repeat rows um for a little while until i get my panel my first panel as large as i want it to be and then we'll do a little bit of a decrease at the top for the um, neck area and then we'll do some ribbing at the bottom and then we'll have to make two panels and some sleeves but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and repeat rows three and four until um i get mine <clears throat> I'll tell you how many rows I do here in just a second. All right, so I have done a total of 31 rows and that is counting that very first row of single crochet. So counting that, I have done a total of 31. Now this is for my size and my height that I told you and everything. But, so I'm gonna give you a quick measurement, but we are, we are still gonna add to this, but I'm gonna give you a quick measure of my piece so far. So, so far my piece major is approximately 21 inches okay now we will be adding um another inch and a half to the top and about two inches of almost two inches of ribbing at the bottom so if you feel that uh, total amount isn't long enough for you, because I'm kind of short, I'm not a very tall person, you keep going until you feel that you've reached the length that you wanted. Remember, we're, we will be adding two more rows, or two more inches at the bottom, and then about an inch and a half at the top, which we're gonna do right now. So regardless of what size you're making, we wanna leave four of these clusters open for the neck okay and also two stitches two double crochets on each side of it so you know it doesn't matter what size you're doing that's going to be the neck size for everybody but it will be different on uh, if you made yours wider you'll have to go in a little bit further than i did so uh, what we're going to do now for row 32 is we are going to chain one and turn our work. So you, row 31 should have been a row where we did chain spaces. You see that, how I ended in that. So this is row 32. It's just going to be a small row. What we're going to do, if you want to mark off with stitch markers your neck hole in case, uh, you know, you did yours larger. Like I said, you'll have to go in more more than I will but remember you leave you leave uh, four of these open and then two double crochets on each side of it those that will be where your neck hole is so if you want to put a marker here and here that way you know where you need to where you need to stop but I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to put a marker on mine because mine's relatively short before I get to that area 
So you just want to go ahead and uh, crochet your pattern as normal until you get to the area uh, to where your neck hole ends, where I just showed you. So we go ahead and do our three double crochets. I chained one, I turned, do my three double crochets. And then I'm going to do my little cluster here. And then I go back and do three double crochets around that post after I chain that three. And then I'll do my three double crochets here. Now remember, if you're making yours bigger or even smaller, you'll have a different number of rows than me. But I am already at my where I need to be. This is my stopping point right here. This double crochet before uh, this one. So I'll go ahead and finish this out and make my cluster here. Chain three. But you keep doing the pattern until you get to where the neck hole is aligned right for you. Remember, it's the same for every size. And once you get here, I just did my last cluster that I need to do. Here is where my neck hole starts. It's right here. These two double crochets. So I'm going to go ahead and double crochet into this double crochet. Like that. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. Now remember, you might have, remember, you're going to have more if you did yours bigger. Now we're going to do another row real quick. We are going to skip this first double crochet, okay? And we're going to do a single crochet decrease over the next two stitches of this little shell here. So we chained one, we turn, and now we're not going to do anything in this double crochet. We're going to go into this stitch right here, drop a loop, into the next one drop a loop yarn over and go through all three loops like that and then we're going to do it again over this stitch and the chain three we're going to go in to the stitch drop a loop and into the top of the chain three drop a loop and yarn over and go through all three like that okay now we're going to work a chain of two. Now we're doing our chain space row. And then we'll do three double crochets right down here into the bottom. So there's one, two, three. And then we're going to chain two. And then we will do our single crochet into the top of this chain three of this cluster. It's fairly the same, just a little bit different there um, in the beginning. And then we chain two, and then we go to end by putting three double crochets into those last three double crochets. And that was row 33, and that will end it. Now, you want to leave, uh, I always clip off a long tail, kind of for a little bit of a long tail for sewing later. Now we need to do the same thing. It's similar, but a little different to the other side. So we're going to flip it back over to where we started. So this will be on this side. So that way our shells are all facing the correct way. So you need to find out where your neck hole begins and that's where you need to start. So remember four shells and then two stitches after the last shell. So I need to start in this stitch right here. So that's where you need to start in this double crochet. I'm gonna go ahead and chain one. Now I'm going to go back into that same stitch and work a double crochet. Just like that. Now I am going to double crochet into the next single crochet here on top of this. And I'm going to work my shell pattern. So I'm going to chain three go around the double crochet and do my shell. Just a little different than what we did over there, but pretty similar. And then you just continue working the repeat until you get to the end. So I will work three double crochets into my next three double crochets. 
this is row 32 and then I'm going to work my shell or shell cluster right here remember I'm just doing the same repeat as we've always been doing and then I will end with three double crochets into the last stitch and that'll end that row and now we're going to do one more round we're going to chain one and turn to make it kind of match the other side it's a little different but but similar we'll go ahead and work our uh, three double crochets here remember you're doing this until you reach where your neck hole is yours could be bigger or smaller than mine then we'll chain two and i'm going to work a single crochet on top of this chain space just like we normally would chain two three doubles into my next three doubles here okay and now we're going to end this side a bit differently we are going slip stitch into the chain three of this shell right here and that ends that round so you know it was done a little bit different this side we did some slip stitching and this side up the shell and this time we only did one slip stitch but it creates the same look pretty much and by the time we get done sewing it together edging it it's gonna look okay I hope so there's the top of our panel and there's our neck hole you know we're gonna go around it and stuff and clean it up and whatnot so now we're going to turn it around and then work on the bottom of our work and we're going to work that two inches of ribbing that I said that we're going to put on the bottom. Okay, so you want to turn it where the shells are facing right side up. So if you look at the shells or clusters or whatever I've been calling them, you want them to be facing right side up. So actually that bottom row of single crochet is facing the wrong side. And that's what we want. So we're going to start down here into the first single crochet that we made. And we are going to chain one and go back into it and double crochet. So we're going to make one double crochet in every stitch across the bottom. Now, since I ended, I started with 68 chains. And then when I ended row one, I had 67 left. I should have 67 double crochets whenever I make it back to the end. So whatever you had on row one after you finished row one, is what you should have here so i'm just going to continue along working one double crochet in every stitch until i get to the end of my row all right i have made it to the end of one, of row one of the rib bottom ribbing and i have my 67 stitches so what I'm going to do now is chain one and turn my work for row two of the ribbing. So I'm going to go ahead and do a double crochet into the very first stitch. Now the next stitch I'm going to do a back post double crochet. So I'm going to do a double crochet around the post of the back side of it like that. And then my next stitch will be a regular double crochet into the top of the next. And then a back post double crochet. Next stitch, regular double crochet. And next stitch will be back post double crochet. Regular double crochet. Back post double crochet regular double and back post double now i'm going to repeat this until i get to the end of row two of my ribbing just regular double crochet back post double all the way until we get to the end 
Okay, I've come to the end of row two of my ribbing and I finished with the double crochet into my last stitch. I still have my 67 stitches that I should have and you should have the same amount that uh, what you started with. So we're gonna do one more row. We're gonna chain one and turn. And now we are going to double crochet into the first stitch. And we're gonna front post a double crochet around the next. And then we're going to do a regular double crochet into the next and front post double crochet into the next. So it's the same kind of as what we did on round two of the ribbing. It's or row two of the ribbing. Um, it's just that this time we're doing a front post double crochet opposed to back post. Regular double crochet and a front post double crochet and as you can see it keeps our ribbing um, nice and lined up so i'm going to go ahead and continue uh this row three of the ribbing of my regular double crochet front post double crochet row repeat here until i get to the end All right, I have made it to the end here. Now I'm going to stop there. And like I said, it's almost two inches of ribbing. Um, this would be a good time where um, if you feel like maybe you made a mistake and you didn't get your top long enough, remember this crease right here will rest in the middle of your shoulders. You can add more rows of ribbing, certainly as many as you would like to make it longer if you'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and tie off that. Um, that's row three of my ribbing and I have still have my 67 stitches So now what we have to do is make two panels That are exactly the same. I have already done that And I have lots of tails hanging. So now we need to sew it up. Okay Now I did color I mentioned in the beginning that I did color control my project um, so I determined where I wanted my collars to be because I don't really I'm not a fan of projects that don't line up that well <laughs> this yarn isn't the isn't too bad I mean you can't collar control this yarn perfect but you can do your best oh I did my best but collar control does not matter to some people and that is fine also so to sew it together we want to put the ribbing you see how the ribbing is this is the right side over the ribbing we want it facing up on the bottom and then facing it down on the top because we're going to be sewing it inside out and then when we're done sewing it we'll flip it right side out that way the seam is not visible so let we're going to go ahead and uh do the top first so i left lots of long tails you never know when you're going to need them for sewing i think i left too many but better to have too many than not enough that's for sure so we're going to sew these two little spots at the top up and then we'll have to mark off for our armholes. So I'm going to be using a yarn needle to sew these up. So I'm going to take one of my tails and I'm going to sew it. Remember we're sewing it wrong side out. That's what we want. And then when we flip it inside out, the seam should be nice and clean and visible. So what you want to do is just gently, gently, I guess, <laughs> gently or carefully um, sew both these sides together and you want to do it neatly. Now I'm going to be do uh, going back and forth. I'm not going to be going over. So I go through one stitch and I go through the same stitch on the other side like that. And then again, go through the next stitch and then the same stitch on the other side. And when you get to the chain spaces, kind of go through the chain spaces the best that you can. Those little chain twos that we did. Sew them up. And we do this all the way across. Remember to try to keep it lined up as much as possible to where your stitches are matching up like your three double crochets they need to match up with the three double crochets on the other piece 
and your clusters need to match up. So it all kind of needs to just match up in alignment so it doesn't look off when we flip it inside out. So it looks, so I always just say, take your time when you sew it together, don't rush it. Nothing really good it comes of things that are rushed. Patience is always the virtue when it comes to crochet. So I'm almost all the way across here. And just do your best to kind of get it where it looks right. Now we're stopping at the top here. We're not going to sew up this uh, side of the cluster. It remains open because that's going to be part of our, of our neck. So I'm going to go across it again. Only I'm going to, as I'm going across it again, I'm actually hiding my tail too and giving it some extra hold, I guess. And I want to do the other side the exact same way. And then I'll hide any of leftover tails. It seems like I have tons of them for some reason. Remember, do not go down, don't sew up down the side of this cluster here. Or down the side of this cluster on the other side. We only sew up at the top portion to here. This is left open. Because it's part of our, our neck. Okay. So I'm going to finish this up, finish this up, get rid of some of these tails. There's like a thousand. I don't even know where they came from. And then um, we'll go ahead and mark off for our armholes next. Okay, so I have got my top sewn together there. Now I'm not going to flip it inside out yet. We need to sew up the sides. So we need to mark off for the armholes. Now I know from experience from making myself clothing that my armholes need to be in between six and seven inches. Now, what I would suggest you do is just, this, this is how I always de determine, de determine my armhole size, is try it on now um, and kind of put this on your shoulder and let it hang down and kind of pinch where you feel like you need your armhole to be. But like I said, I like to keep, I keep mine around six, seven inches. So I'm gonna say um, right here at this row, and you're gonna need a stitch marker. So I'm going down from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth one. And then I need to make sure I get the same row on the other side. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Grab them both up, and I'm going to tie them together with a stitch marker. And that's going to be my armhole. And we need to make sure that we mark off the exact same, whatever yours might be, on the other side. So for now, I'll just give a little tie. Because we'll come back to that later. So I got 10 rows. Let me make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. It's hard to tell. Not this black. Nine, and then the top one. Yep, ten rows. Ten rows is what what mine is, and I uh, should equal right around six inches or so. Six and a six and a half. So that's mine. Yours can be different than mine, but once you get yours marked off, now we're gonna sew from um, here all the way down in the same manner that we just sewed our uh, top up with. So I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of yarn and my yarn needle. I'm going to sew up the side. Now remember we still have the wrong side facing us. So I'm going to start right here is where my said my armholes are going to be. Now it's very important that you keep your piece in your rows lined up. So if it's easier for you to pin them down, I always suggest doing that. Because if you don't want to mess up and then when you get down here, it ended up being sewn like this and you have like three inches, two or three inches left over on one side and none on the other. 
So it's either you either got to keep a really close watch and make sure you're keeping each row sewn up and lined up correctly or uh, you I always suggest pinning it. Sometimes I pin it and sometimes I wing it. I'm going to wing it tonight and hope for the best. But we're just going to do it the same way that we did the top back and forth all the way down and we're going to do the same on both sides neatly slowly take your time no rush you want to make a nice nice clean nice neat seam and you want to make sure your rows are kept lined up so it doesn't look funny when you um turn it inside out because you'll be You'll be able to tell if the rows aren't lined up when you flip it inside out. So I'm going to continue down. All the way down to past my uh, ribbing. I'm going to do the, you know, when I get down to my ribbing, I'm just going to sew it up the same. Sew my whole piece up all the way down here to the end. And then I'll tie off. And then I need to make sure I mark the sleeves the exact same size as I did over here. And then sew that side up. So I'm going to continue doing this while you continue doing yours. And then we can meet back up and see how it looks flipped inside out. We can only hope for the best, right? I'll see you in a second. Alright, so I have flipped my work inside out. And here are my seams. Pretty clean. Nice and lined up. Both sides are just fine. Now it's time to do the sleeves. I went ahead and did one. Now I'm doing, uh, I did three quarter sleeves, as you can see in the picture. You can actually stop and do uh, short sleeves, or you can continue for uh, a little bit longer and make full blown long sleeves that you want. Um, that's completely up to you. The sleeves are not um, that hard to make. We're basically doing the same thing, but we're going to be working it in the round, which means we're going to be turning um, every every round. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Now, the hardest part here on the sleeves, if you was to ask me, if you was to ask that way, that is, is getting the right amount of stitches around your hole. So I may I left an eight. Or, I'm sorry, six and a half inch hole on mine. Remember, um, I left 10 inches or 10 uh, rows on one side and 10 on the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here. That's the inside where I started to sew. And I'm going to tie it on and knot. I know knots are a no no in crochet, but I use them to my new yarn that I'm going to start my sleeves with. We won't tell anybody that I did that, okay? It's between us. It's between us. Okay, now what you have to do now is the stitch that we're doing, since we're working it in the round, it has to be an even multiple of eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to work single crochet around. And we got to make sure that it ends, that we have a multiple of eight in single crochet. So on my other sleeve, what I did was 24 stitches on one side and I did 24 stitches on the other, single crochets, which made it a total of 48, which is a multiple of eight. Now, if you left your hole wider, you'll need more stitches, but whatever you do, just make sure that you evenly space out your single crochets as best as you can and you need to have your total number of single crochets need it has to be i mean it has to be it won't work if it's not a multiple of eight so it's okay if you have to take it out a couple times i had to take it out once over there on the other side to get it right so it's just the way it is so i'm going to start so here is my seam i'm going to start one side before my my seam or one side after my seam. That way I have when I do my double crochets, I'll have one here, one here, and one in the center in the seam. I guess I'll just start after it. So what you want to do, when just like I said, go ahead and just, we're working in the sides of the double crochets, and it's kind of hard to tell where your stitches need to go. So it's just best to guess. 
That's what I do. I, it's just a guessing game for me. So I just, I went through and I chained one. Now what I'm going to do is go back in that same spot and single crochet. Now I'm going to count and I'm also going to hide these tails as I go. And I'm going to work evenly spaced out my single crochets. I'm going to try to get 24 single crochets on one side and 24 on the other. Now remember though, if you have left a bigger arm space opening, you'll need more single crochets than me, but just make sure that when you finish, it is an even multiple of eight. This is the hardest throw of the sleeve. After this, it's just, it's easy from then, from here on out. Get the sleeve done, get the neck done, and we're pretty much done. So go ahead and work around putting one thing evenly spacing out uh, your single crochets along these double crochets. Kind of a rule I try to go by is two double crochets or two single crochets to every double, but um, sometimes I get three single crochets in a double, but it doesn't matter. You just evenly space them out the best that you can and make sure when you get back around to the beginning that your number is a multiple of eight. Okay, so I have got my multiple of eight. I have 48 single crochets around my row, uh, first row of the sleeve. Now I'm going to go ahead and start row two. We're going to, I'm all twisted up for some reason, chain one, and we're going to go back into the first stitch and do a double crochet. We're going to do three double crochets in a row. So there's one, two, and then three. So we got three doubles in a row. Now what we're going to do is skip two and we're going to double crochet into the next stitch and we're going to work our cluster. That's where we chain three and go back around like we did in the other, like we did in the pattern and do three double crochets. Now we're going to skip two again, skip, skip, and we're going to work three double crochets in a row. So there's one, two, and three. And this is what we're going to repeat for row two of the sleeve. So we're going to skip two, skip, skip, and double crochet into the next. And then we do our shell cluster thing. So we chain three. And then we work three double crochets around the post of that stitch. Skip two, and we work one double crochet into the next three stitches. So we're, I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around. You know, it's very similar to what we were doing here um, until I get back to my starting point. Okay, so I've come to the end of round two of our sleeve. And I ended in a little cluster here. So what we're going to do is finish the round by slip stitching into our first double crochet. Now rounds three and four are the repeat rounds. Just for a few rows. So what we're going to do now for uh, row three. We're going to chain one and we have to turn our work in order for the stitch to look the same as it did. And we're going to be working this way now. So we're going to go back into that very first double crochet and we're going to work a double crochet into it. Just one double crochet there in that first double crochet. Now we're going to chain two and we are going to single crochet into the chain space of this cluster like we did before. And again, we're going to chain two now we're going to put one double crochet in each of the next three double crochets. And then we chain two and we single crochet into the chain space of the next cluster. And then we chain two and one double crochet into the next three double crochets. Chain two, single crochet into the chain space of the next cluster, chain two, double crochet into each of the next three double crochets. 
So you can t you can see it's it's the same thing that we worked for the whole pattern. It's this a slight difference. Chain two, single crochet into the chain space of the next cluster. Chain two. One double crochet into the next three. I'm almost to the end, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish out this round real quick. So double crochet in those three, chain two. One double or one single crochet into the chain space of the next cluster, chain two. Double crochet into the next three double crochets. chain two, single crochet into the chain space of the next cluster, chain two, and now we're back at the start. Now remember we started with one double crochet, so we only have, we have three double crochets here, but we already did one in the beginning, so we just need to double crochet in the remaining two double crochets, like that. And then we'll slip stitch into this first double crochet here. And that will end uh, round three. So we'll chain one and we'll go back around to the front side of our work. Just like that. Now we'll start off by putting a double crochet into the first double crochet. And then a double crochet into the next two double crochets. So that's three in, the row, three in a row. And then we will skip this chain space and then this single crochet here, we're going to work our little, we're going to work a double crochet and then our cluster. So we chain three and work three double crochets around the post of that stitch. One double crochet into the next three double crochets. And then we double crochet right here into this next single crochet on top of this cluster. And then we go ahead and chain three and do our cluster. So three double crochets around that double crochet. And this is the pattern we're going to repeat now for row four. Double crochet into the next three. And work our double crochet into the next single crochet, chain three, and work our cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this pattern until I get back around to the beginning. Okay, I've come to the end here of round four. Um, I did my last cluster, and I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet. Now I'm going to repeat rounds three and four, but I'm only going to repeat them until I finish out row seven. So only three more rounds. And then I'm going to do some decreases. Now if you have um, larger arms at the top, you can do more rounds. I, I always try my shirt, my clothing off and on as I'm working with it to make sure I know when to decrease. So if you feel like maybe you have thicker arms and you want to do a few more rows like this before we decrease, that's fine. You can do as many rows of this size right here or the size that yours is right now if it's bigger than mine until you feel like it's that your arms starting to get smaller and you want to do a round of decreases. But anyways, so what I'm going to do for round... Um, five is I'm just going to repeat round three. I'm going to chain one and turn. So I don't have many more rows to go before I decrease on mine. But I'm just going to repeat row three. So remember we just start out with one double crochet right back into that very first double crochet. And then we chain two and we single crochet into the top of this chain on this cluster. Chain two and one double crochet into the next three double crochets. So I'm going to repeat rows. I'm on, I'm on round five right now. 
I'm going to repeat rows three and four until I finish out round seven. So not, not that many more rounds to do. But once I finish out round seven, I will meet back up with you and I'll show you how we decrease. It's really easy to do that too. And we'll finish out the sleeves. All right, so I have made it to the end of round seven. So what I'm gonna do is do some decreasing now. So row eight is my, um, starts my decrease row. So I'm gonna chain one and turn back around to the front side of my work. Remember, you can do this larger if you feel like your arms are larger and you need a bit more space before you decrease, that's fine. You can decrease whenever you think it, it fits you well enough to do. It's adjustable. All right, so the decrease is done like this. We're gonna go ahead and start off by putting a double crochet into our very first double crochet. And then we're gonna do a double crochet decrease over the next two stitches. So we're gonna yarn over and go into the next double crochet and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops. Then we're gonna yarn over and go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two Three loops remain, yarn over and go through all three. That took those two remaining two stitches and made it into one. So now as to the three double crochets there, we now have two. And then we're just gonna jump here to our next single crochet and double crochet in it. Chain three and work our cluster. So we work our three double crochets around that post. And then we got our next three double crochets. We are gonna put one double crochet into the first one. And then we're gonna do a double crochet decrease over the next two. So we'll yarn over, go into the next one and drop a loop and yarn over, go through the first two. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two and yarn over and go through all three, just like that. And we're gonna do this all the way around. So we're gonna jump to our next single crochet and we're gonna put a double crochet in it. Chain three and work our cluster. So three double crochets around that double crochet we just made. And then we are going to work a double crochet into the first double crochet and a double crochet decrease over the next two. That, and again, double crochet into the next single crochet, chain three, and three double crochets around the post of that same double crochet. And here's our three double crochets again. Double crochet in the first. And a double crochet decrease over the next two. So we're gonna repeat this pattern, doing our double crochet decrease every time we reach three double crochets. We do the one double crochet and then the double crochet decrease all the way around back to our starting point. All right, I'm coming to the end of row eight. And I did my cluster here. Now I'm going to end. Now remember we did the one double crochet and we had the decreases. I'm gonna end by slip stitching into our first double crochet, just like that. I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. Now it's all the same now, except, except the only difference is now, instead of working three double crochets, we only have two double crochets in between our clusters. That's the only difference now. So we start out by putting a double crochet into our first double crochet, chain two, and single crochet into our next, or into that chain space of the next cluster, chain two. Now we only have two double crochets here. So one double crochet in the next two double crochets. So everything is exactly what we've been doing, but there's only two double crochets instead of three now. So I'm going to keep repeating this until I get the sleeve. Oops, did too many. 
sleeves as long as I want it to be. I did a total of 16 rows on my other sleeve and then I stopped. Now if you want yours long, longer, that's fine. You can do more rows. You can also do, an, if you want to make a long sleeves, like all the way to past your wrist and you don't want it this loose, you can do another row of decreases um, later on towards the end. Um, you can take these two right here and make them into one and that'll make the cuff even smaller. So, you know, that's, that's your options that you have. Um, many options to make, you know, make it, make it look a little different to suit your, your likings, but still very easy to adjust. But I'm going to go ahead and finish out uh, 16 rows or rounds. And I will meet back up with you once I finish out this sleeve. So 16 is what I did. You remember, you can do as many as you like or as little as you did. You didn't even have to do 16. It's completely up to you. Okay, so I got both my sleeves done. Mine are three quarter sleeves. I ended at 16 rows and I ended where uh, I left this little the decorative edge on it. Remember, longer if you want, short if you want, whatever you want to do. Now let's go around and clean up the top. So if there's a side that you like better, both sides look the same to me, but if there's one that you particularly like better, um, put it on the other side and we're going to start in the back. Say, say, say I don't like this side. Just, we're just pretending. Say there's something wrong with it and I don't like it and I want to, I want to wear it towards the back uh, of, and I don't want it to be on the front of me. So what I'm going to do is start in the back. Um, you can start anywhere that you want, but I'm going to kind of start up here. I'm going to start right here. I think the best place to start is you see where this double crochet from our row is. It's attached to this stitch. Go ahead and go into that and chain one. Go back into it and single crochet. What we're going to do now is do a row of single crochet to clean up this final edge all the way around. So we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch and when we get to these chain two spaces just go right through the space and work two single crochets and there's one single crochet here on top of this cluster go into that and then there's a chain two just go right through the space and work two single crochets and then one single crochet in each of these three double crochets here. The only reason I said to pick the back to start is this so you can't see where you, this starting uh, seam really doesn't make a difference. It's not even that noticeable, but noticeable, but I've always done that. So, so I'm going to go around here I'm working two single crochets in each of the chain two spaces one single crochet in each of the double crochets and then there's that one single crochet there at the top of the cluster that we work one single crochet into I'm going to show you what we're, what, what we're going to do when we get to the side I'm almost there so let me go ahead and whip over there real quick <clears throat> I'm going fast on purpose so I can get over here and show you okay so we're here we are here now this is the side where we decreased earlier um, remember when we were decreasing uh, for the shoulders up here so it's a bunch of si it's sides of double crochets here. So go ahead and put, um, let's see, there's this double crochet here. I would just kind of try to put a stitch kind of on top of that. 
and then the side of this double crochet just put two single crochets there now this does not have to be perfect this stitch count doesn't even matter i'm not even going to count mine i'm just trying to evenly space out my single crochet so this double crochet here i'm going to try to put two single crochets through it and remember if you if it doesn't have to be perfect it's never going to be perfect do you just do your best i'm going to put one single crochet actually I think what I'm going to do here at the seam is work a half double crochet at the seam. That'll bring it up to equal single crochets. And then I'm going to continue around working one single crochet. Try to work two into this double. Remember, you don't have to do exactly what I do. But if your seam at over here does seem a bit lower, work a half double crochet in it and that'll kind of bring it up equal to the single crochets. But if it's even, um, don't worry about it. Just put a single crochet there. It's easy. I don't, doesn't, my patterns never have to be perfect. I don't worry about them being perfect. You shouldn't either. I always say if we wanted something perfect, we would just go to the store and buy it. Still probably wouldn't be perfect then anyways. And it definitely wouldn't be as cool. So I'm going to continue around. Single cro crocheting. Cleaning up my edges. Um, until I get back to my starting point. Okay, I have made it back to my starting point, And I went ahead and slip stitched into my first single crochet. I'm not going to count my stitches. I don't care how many I have. And you shouldn't care either. As long as you did your best to evenly space out. Now, I'm not going to do any more rounds of single crochet. Because I want this to be an off-the-shoulder sweater. Now, if you want to add a few more rounds of single crochet. So it doesn't fall off your shoulders quite as bad. You can do that. But I'm going to go ahead and stop now and I'm going to clip my yarn. I'm going to hide that tail and then I'm going to do one last thing before I'm finished. After I hide that tail, I am just going to go around the bottom with a row of single crochet just like we did at the top. Because since we worked these rib stitches at the bottom, they kind of flip up. And to stop that from happening, we just go ahead and start. And any stitch, I'm going to start along the seam in any stitch. And just work one single crochet in every stitch. Again, I'm not going to count my stitches after this. Go ahead and chain one. Go back into the same spot and single crochet. I won't be counting my stitches. I'm just going to single put one single crochet in every single stitch am i off camera i'm sorry um all the way around the bottom just one row of single crochet and that will clean up that bottom edge that'll keep those uh post stitches from flipping up and it'll give your will it work a little bit more of a finished look so once i make it all the way around i will just end in that first single crochet by slip stitching into it tie off hide that tail hide any remaining tails that I have and we should be good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I will see you when all my tails are hidden and my shirt is complete okay I am finished hiding all my tails and it is done. Here's what it looks like. But you've seen some pictures in the beginning. So I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial. I think it turned out quite well. I really like brown though. Brown my favorite color. Oops. So if you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, or any of my tutorials. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram. If you make this or anything else. Anything you want to show me. Yarn. I love looking at yarn. Anything. Um, you can tag me in it on Instagram. There's links to that stuff below in the description box. But until next time, have a good day. Stay safe.